This is Let's Build DSO with Kenny J. And today we're going to be talking just a little bit about the DSO API. Now, I'm new to the whole DSO world. I just started uh, about a week ago and I went to, and, and my background is in programming, software development. And so my in, immediate uh, place where I went were to the uh, official documents about uh, the API and how you run your own node and all that. But I found, I, I was pretty overwhelmed with that. And I, from what I've seen on uh, comments and, and on um, the Discord channel, there's probably others like me. So I spent the better part of last week um, just kind of hacking around and inspecting the code and, and watching the network calls get made and trying to figure out what was going on. And so I'm just going to try to share what I found. And like I mentioned, I just started a week ago, so I don't have um, the curse of knowledge, right? Like sometimes you know so much about a subject, it's hard to explain it to a newbie. Um, I guess I uh, would have the blessing of ignorance as opposed to the curse of knowledge. Um, okay, so if we look at the, the official documents, let's, let's take a look real quick. Bring it over here. Um, some of you have probably gone through this already, uh, the setting up your dev environment, the DS code walkthrough, um, running a node. I was like, oh man, I don't want to do all of that right now. I just want to see if I can make an API call uh, to get posts, you know, get my own posts, get someone else's posts. And, um, but anyway, uh, and we'll get to that in a second. But what we'll do first is the, the backend API, if you go to the docs there, um, we have three, uh, I'll show you if I do a find get forwards uh, space forward slash, we only really have three get um, endpoints, all the rest are posts. And so the nice thing is, you know, with a get endpoint, um, we do API dot, we'll do bitcloud.com. It just returns text. Your node, your DS node is running. And that's this one right here. So the forward slash. The next one here is API uh, health check. We can run this one really quickly just in a browser. Once again, because this is just a simple get, it works in a browser. And this one, um, uh, as, as per the documents, all it's gonna return is uh, a 200. So uh, the page came back fine. And then lastly, this is the one where we start getting a little bit more into API-ish kind of territory because it actually re returns us some JSON. And so yay, well, those are three things we can do so far in a browser. And if we can do it in a browser, we can do it programmatically, right? Um, but it's once you try to do some of these other ones like this post uh, get app state, if I try to do that here, it's not gonna work. Okay, so that said, my thought is I will take us through just a, uh, a simple exercise so we can call these uh, APIs and understand a little bit. I've got one in particular that we'll work with and uh, that's specifically getting all the, the posts for a particular user. Um, but first, first of all, I'm gonna do it in Python. So I know the code, the, the majority of the code is written in Go, which is a language I'm not familiar with. And the front end is done in Angular, and I'm more of a React kind of guy. So um, I'm going to go with something that I know, and it's super simple. Now, if you haven't had any experience with Python, that's fine. Uh, just follow along. It'll be really simple. If you hate Python, um, I get that. I used to hate Python, um, but I don't know, in the past couple years, I've uh, really seen the light, I guess. And the 
programming fundamentals classes that I teach, um, I've chosen Python because I think it's a great beginner language and it's just a great all purpose language. And those of you who love Python, that's great too. Um, the IDE, the integrated development environment that we will use, I'm going to, I'm going to use a browser based one called Replit. Maybe you haven't heard of it before. We'll go through it real quickly. Um, if you already love Python, you can do what I'm doing in idle or VS code or Jupyter notebooks, whatever, however you want to do it. But this is meant for the absolute beginner who has no experience with Python. Um, maybe you just have a little experience with coding, but you can code along with me and uh, we will get through that. So first of all, we're going to create a project, but like I said, we're going to do it in uh, Replit. So I'm going to go, it's uh, it used to be repl.it. That still works. I think they've switched over. They want it to be replit.com. Uh, type that in here. Let me uh, let me incognito this so I can see what you would see. Uh, replit. Okay, so all you need to do um, sign up, and you can use Google, GitHub, Facebook to create your account. And then when you get there. Um, you might see a uh, page like this. You got your side menu stuff. We're not if if you're not where I am right now, go ahead and hit the little ham the sandwich uh, menu. Hit home, and there we go. You should be seeing this. Uh, maybe you see this. I I already read up on that. I'm gonna dismiss it. Okay, this is how we're gonna start. If you see a uh, create and a Python button click that. If for some reason you don't see anything, but you have the plus sign up here, you can do it either way. Um, I will do this plus one and it'll say search templates. And if it's, if you clicked there, it'll automatically default to Python. Um, here, you can just start typing Python. I do a lot of work in Python here. So it's one of my favorites and give it a title. It'll give you a random title. Uh, if you um, can't think of anything, I'll just say DSO API uh, lesson one. And okay, oh, uh, Replit is free with a catch, right? It's a freemium model. If you're using it free, all your REPLs, so your code is gonna be public. Um, and that's fine with me, uh, for the school, I have a different account and th yeah, it's that, that one we're able to do private, but we pay for that. But here, um, that's why you, you can't click the button. Anyway, I'm going to hit create REPL. And the nice thing about this, boom, um, I already get a, uh, a, a full IDE in the browser. So even if um, you're trying to do this on a Chromebook or an, an iPad with a keyboard, this should all work. Um, yours might, your setup might look a little different. Your console might be underneath. Um, you can switch it around, I guess. Uh, <laughs> I should have remembered how to do that before so I could tell you. Uh, anyway, so Python, super simple. Um, we'll do a hello world real quick. Hello world. And we hit run. And in the console, we see hello world. So what are we going to do here? We will first, um, we're going to need to import a library. Requests. That is a, um, I can't remember if it's built into Python or not, but we'll find out really soon because if I don't have it, it will automatically go to the internet and install it. So for those of you who are familiar with Python, that means you don't, with Replit, you don't have to do any pip installs. Um, you just import it and then it'll go to pip and install it behind the scenes for you. Kind of cool. Your DSO node is running. Okay, let's try to, let's try to do that ourselves. 
uh, or let's try to do that same thing in code. So URL uh, api.bitcloud.com. We got the HTTPS, HTTPS out in front. Okay, we are going to use this request, right? And we'll use a method called get because that's what we're doing, right? We're doing a get, not a post. And that's all you have to do. And it's gonna return a response. And I will just call it response. And whoops, I need to put an S there. There we go, let's get my red squigglies. All right, request, request.get uh, the URL and it's gonna have a response. And then we want to print the response and in this case it's just text and so we can access it through a text property let's hit run and whoa your DSO node is running it did it awesome okay um let's let's take it up a step what did we do next we did um api we did the get exchange rate so i'm gonna copy this Boom, go over here, replace this, uh, paste it in. What, there's no paste, okay. I'm gonna do control V, there we go. I pasted it in there. <clears throat> oh, what happened here? Let's see, oh, because <laughs> I don't have the HTTP out front. Oh boy, all right, let's try this again. Um, what we wanted to do is put it here. There we go. Maybe that'll work. See, I was trying to help you guys out because maybe you um, would have made that same error and now I'm showing you how to correct it. So um, very cool. Look at this. We got some JSON. Now, like I said, this is, um, we're, we're, we're getting more into our API-ness, right? We're getting data back in a JSON format. Okay, um, but text um, isn't super helpful. So what we can do is, let's see, this is our exchange rate. Let's call it exchange. We're gonna create a new variable, uh, exchange JSON. And with this response, there is a JSON uh, method, which will take the string that comes back and convert it into uh, JSON, which in uh, Python is also just a dictionary object. Um, and because it is a good old dictionary object, if I wanted to grab the value for one of these keys, let's do the key. Well, let's first of all, let's copy this and let me, whoops, bring up my notepad. There we go. Let's, let's take a look at this formatted. Ooh, there we go. This is nice and readable. Okay, so let's say we want to know what the USD cents per DSO exchange rate is. So, uh, of course, this is a, a key value pair, um, this, this item right here. So we're going to take the key. I'm going to copy that. And... Uh, in Python, you access it with brackets, and then you will use the string key. And again, I want to print, so I will put print out in front, hit run, and there we go. Now that's not too friendly, so what if we did this? We will say um, the blah, 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 blah is... And we'll do a little comma that puts a, a space in between um, our, uh, th this string and then this, uh, well, this number. And we'll hit run. There we go. The US cents per DSO exchange rate is 8,294. Cool, right? This, we're getting somewhere. 
Okay, here's an interesting thing I found is you can actually remove this subdomain. And if you run it, it still works. And why do I even bring that up? Well, because if you go to um, another client, uh, another node like Diamond App, for instance, um, which is also, you guys know better than me because you've, I'm just a newbie, but uh, um, there's a whole bunch of different front end clients, but everyone's running their own node. Uh, that makes it decentralized, right? But if I substitute in uh, Diamond App, now this should fail, but if I remove the API part, let me clear this. It works. So um, what we'll end up doing is for the rest of our APIs, I don't use that subdomain, um, the, the API subdomain. I just use the default, which is probably www, or uh, I guess there is just no subdomain. It's just top level and then the domain. Let's go ahead. I'm just going to... Um, to hop on BitClout, and I hope, <coughs> excuse me, I hope this is not bad form. Once again, I'm, I'm a newbie, maybe I can get away with it. My guess is, if you're going to build something that is um, making lots of API calls, and, and probably if you're making a business out of it, hey, you should probably um, spin up your own node, and then uh, issue your API calls against that. And once I understand the whole create your own, you know, spin up your development node and then maybe uh, uh, get a production node running, once I become more familiar with that, maybe I'll do a video and we can walk through that too. Okay, so far, so good. We are. We went through health check, exchange rate, and we saw that we had JSON. Um, I did the whole, I substituted out um, a domain for another one and got uh, removed a subdomain. Remember, this one didn't work. That's fine. And oh, yeah. And, all right. Let's go for uh, now. Well, now it's going to get fun, right? Now let's, let's call that. Um, <laughs> let's go ahead and find the one uh, get posts for public key. All right. So we don't <laughs> we don't even have any documentation for that. But I've kind of banged around with it a little bit, and so um, uh, we'll 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 work on this together. Okay. So let's take a look. Um, let's go ahead and replace this. Okay, in this case though, remember this is, let's go back to the docs. This is a post, not a get. So um, <laughs> this is definitely not gonna work because we don't, we don't, I know we don't have this key there. So that will blow it up. But, um, you know, let's just call this, let's get a little generic. I know that we, we're supposed to have very meaningful names in our variables. And I always try to teach my students that, but, uh, you know, do as I say, not as I do. Um, if I try to run this right now, um, it's, it's not going to like it. And so I'm using the get. What about post? All right, let's try this. Yeah, no, still doesn't like it. Why? Well, we're still missing some information. We're uh, the the git command get command is uh, very simple. Post you need to add a few things. So in addition to this URL, we want to pa pass it some raw data, and we can pass it as a dictionary or JSON. And I will, I'm going to just cheat real quick, do a little copy and paste abracadabra. There we go. So 
you're like, whoa, it's not even documented. How did you even know to do that? Well, I just uh, did good old um, inspect and on the browser and I did network. It's under uh, payload, sorry. So there we go. Uh, guest post for public key, that's the one we want. I'm gonna look at the payload right here, maybe a preview, nah, we'll just do this. Okay, so we can see last post to hex, media required. So I just uh, copied this and put it in there. So that's how I, I found that out. Now in Python, uh, false is capitalized. So we'll do that. And I didn't, uh, this, this key, uh, that relates to my username, but I found it's not required. So I'm kind of of the belief if something's not required, then, and you don't know what it's doing, <laughs> then don't pass it, right? Okay, so here we go. We have, uh, the data that we're going to be posting to this API. And really, uh, I'm going to do Kenny J, that's me, yay. Um, and number to fetch, I'm going to ask for 10 posts and media required. Not sure what that means. It was set to false um, when I found it there. So I'm going to leave it false. And now I've got this data. What I want to do is I will use a named parameter and I will pass into the uh, JSON parameter. I'm gonna send it this data. And now let's clear this. I hit run. Whoa, that looks like it worked, huh? Look at that. What do you know? So let's grab all of this. That's a little messy, so I'm going to copy that. Let's, let's take a look at this one. All right, format. Okay, this is neater looking, right? So here is um, my latest post. Uh, look what came in the mail today, Yusuf Kamal album. And I uploaded a picture too, and you could see right there. Hey, let's click on this. Should take us. Uh, all right, let's copy. So we got that storage right there. Oh, nice. Okay, that's what I thought would happen. Okay, let's go back. What are we working on? Oh, yeah. There we go. So look at all of these fun, fun keys, all this, all this data we could look at. But on our little app, <laughs> our little text, our console app to view um, this cutting edge technology, um, all, all I really need, all I want is uh, for right now is just this body message. So let's give this a shot. Um, you know what? Let's, let me take one last another look at at this so you'll notice uh from here to here uh, here's our uh our first object right and then you can see the second one so so that's um yeah so we'll we'll just assume we won't count them we'll assume we got 10 right now if i just wanted to print the body from the first post uh, this is now JSON, so I can do, well, let's, before I get too crazy, let's take a look. All right, we're going to first need to access posts. That's our, our root there. So let's say, and it was capitalized, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. And then next, we want zero-based index, zero-based uh, array list. So we want the first, and then we want body and body is capitalized too. Okay, now let's see what happens. You know what, there's probably too much junk. Let's try this again. 
There we go. Whoa. Nice, right? Now we're cooking with fire. Okay. Um, let's run through every, let's iterate through all of our posts and uh, print the body for each one. How's that sound? Fun, right? Okay. So we are going to, we are going to iterate through this. And in Python, it's four, and then you create your variable in. So we'll just, we'll say four post in posts and uh, post and we'll do, whoops, I meant to do square brackets and we'll do body. And we don't really need to do this. So I'm going to comment that out and Python comments with a hashtag. Now I really didn't do anything here, right? I should do, how about we print it to the screen? There we go. Woohoo! All right, hit run. Let's clear this run and oh there we go but i don't have anything separating them right so let's let's put in a separator that'll be fun uh, we can do print and then how about we'll just do an underscore and we'll do it 30 times so isn't that a fun little thing in python so uh, you take a string multiply it by a number and then it just builds a string with that many uh that, that count of that particular uh, character. So, boom, there we go. All right. Look what came in the mail. So, my first week at DSO, Elvis, oh, yeah, I went to Elvis Costello concert uh, on Saturday. Uh, fun times. Finally, first concert post COVID. So, that was pretty great. Um, I'll do rev a review maybe on a different video because that's not what you came for. Okay, Where, what should we do next? Okay, okay, okay. Let's, you know what? I'm boring. Let's do uh, Darmesh. So now if I change out this username, um, because I was just running against mine, but, oh, let's clear. Okay, cool. Now we get uh, Darmesh's uh, list, uh, the, the, his last 10 posts. And the reason why I did this is because you notice, look, there's one that's missing here. So let's take a look. Let's go ahead and we'll print out Uh, I'm going to comment that out real quick. And let me take this. I'm going to copy this. We're, we're going to um, take a look at this nicely formatted and see what's going on. So it was, all right, let's undo what I just did now that we got the data that I was looking for. All right, clear, run. Okay, so it was one, let's, there we go. So one, two. So it was the, the second post that there was no data. Let's figure out what's going on there. And so here's his first post. Very good. We have body and the second one, body is, empty. So why, why is that? Well, let's take a look. There's something else that, um, let's see if we could see something that looks like a body. Oh, there we go. Simplicity for entrepreneurs, keeping things. And then it says reposted, reposted post entry response. So what, what's this looking like? What it's looking like to me is that uh, this was a repost and Darmesh didn't, uh, I hope I'm saying his name right, um, uh, didn't put anything in addition, just reposted. So maybe that's what we want to do too. If we don't have anything in the body, 
let's go ahead and post the body of uh, the, 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 the key reposted post entry response. I am going to copy that so I don't have to remember to type it. So what if we did something like this? Um, we say, if, um, now we'll just do if, if post body. And so in Python, uh, empty string is falsy. So I can just do that. I don't even have to say if it's equal to empty string. Uh, once again, I'm going to indent because now I have um, uh, this conditional here. Um, so I'd print the body. And if uh, it's not blank, or if, it's, if it doesn't have anything there, then I can, uh, I'll do else, and maybe I'll print Instead of body, I will do, I, I did a bunch of copy and paste, paste, so it's no longer in my clipboard. There we go. Let me get back into my clipboard. We'll do post uh, repost response, and then we'll do body. Uh, I think I got it right. I guess we'll find out. Oh, there we go. So this was that one. Now, it might be fun to somehow show what was reposted as opposed to what was posted. And so let's do this. There's a fun little um, library not built in. So under normal circumstances, I would need to do a pip install. But there's one called term color, and I'm going to import a function called cprint, which stands for color print. So what we're going to do is for any of these um, reposts, we are going to turn them blue. Why not, right? So I would just change this to cprint, and then I would add an extra parameter, and I will just say blue. Now, when I hit run, uh, oh, <laughs> sorry, uh, from, there we go. I'm sure you, those of you who are watching are like, come on, don't, it's from, from. Okay, there we go. Okay, see what it's doing? It's doing its little update. It, it, it created a packager file. It's resolving dependencies. And I might, I'm going to pause it here. I'm sure it'll be any second now. Um, there we go. Woo. And oh, look at that. It did. It did do the, um, the blue part. But we can also find that sometimes someone will comment on a repost and reposted entry response, and we have a body, and then we also have another one. So maybe what we do is, and it'd be, it might be fun to do this blue and this regular. So let's go back to our code. And what we'll do here is, in addition to printing the body, we'll say if, there exists this thing, then we'll go ahead and print that too. So let's try this now. Now the nice thing is uh, once that library is loaded, it does, or it, it installs it. it, doesn't have to keep doing it. So it did it once and now it runs quickly. There we go. So here is where there's just a, a repost. Um, and then here is his comment on something he reposted. 
And here's someone saying, how dumb is daylight savings? And Darmesh uh, comments, answer, oh, so very. Okay, uh, fun stuff, right? Okay, let's, uh, let's refactor or um, yeah, let's refactor this a little bit. And I am, I'm just gonna be lazy and post this and I'll go ahead. This, because I created this um, REPL in REPLit as public, um, I'll leave, I'll leave a, UR, uh, a link to it in the show notes so you can look over the code. Uh, let's see, what did I do here? I went ahead and did a little refactoring. Uh, I, I put in uh, uh, a function called get posts and it takes in username. And so now I'll be able to just control right here at this level who we're talking about, and then also print posts. So if I run, I don't think I added anything else fancy to it. So yep, still runs just the same, but now I can just substitute out Kenny J. And man, good, don't clear it out. There we go. And I haven't reposted anyone as you can see. So there we go. Okay, and one last little refactor and in an attempt to make this a little bit more um, application-y, if you will, um, I, all right, I have a main, I added, and so I run this main one here. So here, instead of hard coding the person, we're gonna ask, um, who we're going to ask the user whose posts they want to see. And it, there's not a whole lot of error checking uh, right now. So if you type in someone who doesn't exist, it, it's not going to blow up, but it doesn't give you uh, a nice response. Anyway, um, here, well, let's, uh, picture's worth a thousand words, right? Let's run it. Whose posts would you like to see? Type in DSO username. All right, let's start out with me, Kenny J. Okay, so um, I put <laughs> post for Kenny J. Put that in green. Uh, look what came in the mail. I'm, I only have four posts. What? Oh yeah, I changed this to to four here uh, because ten was too long to read. So we're just going to do four at a time. And then the reason I bring this whole thing up is we've skipped over this thing, but let's take a look now. You'll notice that there are actually, uh, and for some reason this doesn't, uh, it could be the single quotes instead of the double quotes, but uh, my notepad, uh, the, the JSON formatter thing is telling, it's pink, it's telling me it's wrong. And because of that, I don't get the nice little collapsible things, but that's fine. So we really have, at this root level, we have um, two keys. We have post, which is pretty much everything except this last key, which is called last post hash text. And so this is what you get, use to get the next set of posts. So here I'm doing, um, I'm just fetching four posts at a time, but it'll ask here if there are more posts, if there are more posts, all right, let's update the spelling. If there are more posts, would you like to continue? And I'll say, yes, for why? And then it'll print out some more. Are there, if there are more posts, would you like to continue? Yes. If there are more posts, would you like to continue? Yes. Oh, no more posts from Kenny. Now you might ask, why are you saying if there are more posts? Um, shouldn't this either, if there are no more posts, shouldn't this just be an empty string or maybe not even included um, in this response? And that was my initial thought, and I'm not criticizing anyone, but um, you actually end up, even if it's, you've gone through all their posts and you're at the end of, you know, Kenny J's uh, feed, you're still gonna you're gonna get a number and I or or a hat or this 
good. And um, I don't know why. And if you try to use it to get the next batch, nothing comes back. It just comes back empty. So that's why it, before it said, there are more posts, would you like to continue? And then I had to change it to, if there are more posts, because uh, I am not able to tell. And maybe there's something else that I'm not seeing in here that would tell me whether there are really more posts or not. But uh, maybe that's just the way it's built, and that's fine. So let's do this one more time. One more time. We're going to do dar mesh. And now we get, look, we get our nice blue stuff. If there are more, would you like to continue? Why? Um, and then if I hit no, it just says goodbye. There we go. That's it. So that is our get posts for public key. Um, you're passing it the username, um, the number to fetch, this media required. I'm just putting false. We could play around with it another time and see what happens if uh, we set it to true. And then this last post ha ha hash hex, the, the first time through, let's say, this is just going to be empty strings. So uh, I do that somewhere. There we go. Last post has empty string. So the first time through, this is just empty string. And then all subsequent times, I grab this uh, last post hash hex, and then I return it. In addition to the posts, I return that value and I catch it um, right here. Um, and that's what I use to, to print them out. So there you go. I hope that was helpful. And until we do this again.